this is the ranch ferry and I finally got a chance to get around to putting the momentum study we did with the rocket man Daryl Barnett and the lab radar. I did uh, speed erosion, here's the thumbnail on that. I did kinetic energy, here's the thumbnail on that and the links to those two videos are in the description. If you haven't seen those two videos, watch this one and go back and look at those. It's a package. So I did speed erosion, zero to 60. Then I did a kinetic energy video, zero to 60. And this is the momentum video, zero to 60. Stay tuned. All right, so if you haven't seen the other videos, we took three bows. We had a solo cam bow. I think it's high arrow speed was in 282 or something like that. We had a dual cam bow, it's nice and stable, which is mine. And then we had a dual cam, super aggressive, you know, legit fast bow. The top arrow speed we had was 294, although uh, the arrow set started at 388 grains. So if we'd have gone lower than that, we probably could have touched 300 and, and did that, but we didn't. That we shot through the lab radar. Here's a picture of that gizmo. The lab radar catches the flight of a projectile. It could be a bullet or whatever. This thing will set for bullets and all kinds of things, but we set it to archery. You stand next to it, you shoot your bow, and as it's going across and flying through the radar, it picks up the velocity at certain ranges. So all we did in this video was say launch and 60. And I did that for speed erosion, kinetic energy, and this is momentum. We wanted to see what happened at longer ranges. And so we took three different bow platforms and then we shot six different arrows. The mass of those arrows are 388, 436, 514, 589, 616, 670, and 718 grains. This is a big flaw. I said this in the other videos and a lot of these videos, somebody will take a, a single spine and just start loading the front. And I wanted to avoid doing that because you know that there's eventually going to be a point where the arrow flight's gonna be poor and it's not gonna be a fair representation at 60 of what the arrow's probably doing. Are we splitting hairs a little bit there? Nah, maybe, but for me, as somebody who's interested in this and likes to be a little bit more scientific and keep it, you know, in a box a little bit, I went ahead and bare shafted the set. So the really light arrows are 350s. They're all serious Apollos. So they're all the same brand. And then as I walked the spine up, I shot them bare shaft. And when the spine eroded because of the point mass, I'd go up to a 300 and then I went to 250s for the heavy stuff. And I tried to get them all bare shaft, at least close. I made an attempt. Were they perfect? Probably not. If that is something that sticks in your craw, repeat the test. Buy a lab radar. They're $500 and you can put it, post it up and you know we'll see if the results are the same. So, step two, orientation to the graph. So it's a typical you know, chart. Um, we have an X and a Y axis. What seems to get everybody's willy whacker going is the arrow masses. So they're on the bottom. You can see the little hand in the left hand corner here of the graph and there's the arrow masses going across. And then correspondingly, as you go up, the top line represents the launch momentum and the bottom line represents the momentum at 60 yards. So very few people explore changing the arrow mass or seeing what happens at 60. They just shoot through a chronograph at point blank range and call it good. And it gets a little disturbing out there. <laughs> So I'm gonna show you the momentum at launch and 60 for the three different bows. And then we're gonna discuss a few finer points. So the first chart is the solo cam bow. It was the slowest bow, but it wasn't 20 feet per second slower. It was five or seven or something. It wasn't some crazy number. And you can see a natural progression upward in momentum for both uh, calculations for the launch and for the 60 yard momentum. You see an improvement as mass goes up, even though we lost 50 or 60 feet per second shooting the really heavy stuff, the momentum still went up. And then here's the chart for the dual cam bow. 
you see the same results as the mass goes up, even though velocity is decreasing, the momentum is going up. And then the really fast bow, we wanted to throw a really fast bow in there to see what the difference was, and it's not some amazing change. They're all pretty, you know, they're not way out of bounds. They're all going up, they're all improving, and 60 yards is better. So for the long range people, that's why we did this, there's been a lot of talk about shooting a heavier arrow and a, and a higher penetration projectile, but you can't shoot it far. Well, you have to consider whether it's gonna carry enough momentum to do any damage at 60. And so that's what we're talking about here. Now, I'm going to do some a little bit of comparative analysis, arrow to arrow, not a lot. You can look at these graphs yourself, stop the video, and just look at the mass and you can go up and go across and just say, wow, that's a, you know, that's a big difference. But there's a couple of glaring things and a couple of things about the Ashby Foundation in particular that I'm gonna point out. This was the first thing that jumped out at me. So on my channel, I constantly preach structural integrity, perfect arrow flight, try to get to 550 grains and load the front. Despite anything you hear about 700 or 800 grain arrows and my name, I constantly preach, would you just get to 550 and make sure they shoot perfect bullet holes through paper and high structural integrity broadheads. When we looked at the graph, you see that the 60 yard momentum for a 514 grain arrow out of this bow and every bow thereafter is higher momentum than the launch momentum of 388 grains, which means the 388 grain arrow at 60 is even lower. Oh, you may get there faster, but you gotta take into consideration the amount of pop or push or how long that arrow can drive when it hits something hard. And the most people guilty of this are people who go elk hunting. Sorry. Elk are big, their bone structure is big. They're three times, four times the size of a whitetail deer. And we launch very light projectiles to hit the elk. But we don't consider how much momentum it has when it gets to the elk. And this graph clearly shows that a five, even a 514 grain arrow, which isn't crazy heavy, has more momentum at 60 than the 388 grain arrow did at the muzzle. It just gets a little bit you know, hard to swallow. So the, what I did after that was, I looked at the arrow at the bone breaking threshold. So it's between Dr. Ed says, perfect arrow flight, structural integrity, sharp, Single bevel, mm -mm. there's 12 factors. But somewhere near 650 grains is the bone breaking threshold, okay? Here's the chart for an Ashby Street Legal Arrow. I boxed it up, it's between 616 and 670 grains. So at or around 650, perfect arrow flight, structural integrity, single bevel, got it, right? You need the package and deliver the package and the, <laughs> The 60 yard momentum continues to be absolutely enormous compared to a 388 grain arrow at launch. So we have to just take this into consideration. It's just math and math is agnostic. It doesn't really care what we think. But one thing that's been interesting, every time I talk to somebody who's uneducated about bow hunting, but they are educated as an engineer, physicist or engineering student, and I've talked to two people who, who have double masters in different engineering disciplines, and I've had lots of email strings with people who are in the engineering world or their teachers or something. They all say, from a physics standpoint, momentum is the game. Duh, they all say that, like duh. How much energy does that projectile have to keep moving forward is the simplest way I can describe momentum. I'm still working on that, trying to redneck it down. But everybody I've talked to said, you're flying it with kinetic energy and momentum is what makes it keep moving on impact with something durable. That could just be a rib cage hit, but it's something heavier more drag than air. 
Do what you want to with that. This is just math. Go back through this, look at the graphs, and just notice that the momentum constant just continues to improve and go up significantly as mass goes up. Just don't forget this. Dr. Ed said it. When you talk to him personally, he says it. Shoot the heaviest arrow acceptable for your trajectory. Structural integrity, perfect arrow flight, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And some people think that means he's talking out of both sides of his mouth, meaning he's given up on the 650 grain bone breaking threshold, and that's not true at all. 650 grains has a momentum value, more to come, that's why the Ashby Foundation's around, where it can push with the proper broadhead and do a ton of damage and things most people think arrows can't do, okay? But when you hear somebody say, Ed said, shoot the heaviest arrow for the trajectory you find acceptable. He did. That does not negate in the Natal study that the 650-ish 12-factor arrow or greater than 650 was the bone-breaking threshold. Those two things are separate. So this is a momentum study, and we think there is a momentum value, I think, the more I hang out with the Rocket Man, some other people, that we can maybe discover the momentum value that reflects 650 grains and see what that looks like. I don't know. That's what's fun. We're gonna go find out all kind of crazy stuff at the Ashby Foundation. So donate to the Ashby Foundation. The first report is out. Um, go to the Ashby Bow Hunting website and go into the supplemental reports. Rob Nielsen, the president of the Ashby Foundation just came back and did the compound testing on Cape Buffalo under Ed Ashby's guidelines and under his structure with a compound bow. We weren't very surprised, <laughs> but it's done and it's out there. So go to the Ashby Bow Hunting website, ashbybowhunting.org. Please donate so we can start testing, find out what this momentum value might, the magic number might be, or maybe there isn't one. We don't know, but we sure as heck want to find out. Hey, thanks for watching. I am the Ranch Fairy. Hit the subscribe button and uh, take a look at some of my stuff. We are really gonna go deep into a science uh, run this year. The Ashby Foundation has a high speed camera that's coming and we're gonna start playing with that. We're gonna do some, look at some arrow flight stuff. We're gonna try to see what an arrow looks like in the air and try to discover how to make them tune out better with high speed cameras. We're gonna be able to see impacts. We're gonna shoot different angles watch different broadheads go in. It's gonna be real cool on my channel and on the Ashby Foundation channel on the stuff we're just gonna go play with. You, when you do these kind of studies, you can't just decide what the outcome is and try to prove it. You gotta say, hey, I wonder what happens if we do this and then accept what you get. Thanks for watching. See ya.